to the cloud. So mm -hmm. now we're there and I am going live on Facebook. We're live. Hello. All right. Ah. We have Rebecca Charleston on. Wait. Welcome. She, wait, wait. Oh, wait, are we live? I don't know. It says we're live. It's, it's, on oh, it says recording. Oh, there we go. Now we're live on Facebook. Hi, Facebook friends. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. All right, we're going. Today we've got, uh, thanks for joining us on our um, business spotlight. Today we've got Rebecca Chalson, um, personal branding specialist. You've been doing this for over a decade, right? So yeah. very excited to learn about um, personal branding today. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. So can you explain to us a little bit about what you do and what personal branding is? Sure. So personal, as a personal branding strategist, I help people attract, connect, and engage their target audience, both online and offline. And the first way that I work with clients is helping them discover their personal brand. Very often people feel like they have to find it or they have to be inspired, but really it's about uncovering it from within. Mm. So, so the, that's uh, how I help people in discovering, exploring, and spotlighting. So what in the world is, I still even know, we were just talking about a minute ago, like recording these videos. I don't even, under, I've never given before recently. I've never like, when I think about, you know, we're, we've been doing real estate for a long time and uh, I never thought about personal brand ever. I'm like, all right, let's call the next person and get to a closing table. What does brand even mean? I still don't know. So when you think about companies that have brands, for example, Keller Williams has a brand, you see the logo, you know what they're about, they have culture, values, standards. Um, your team has a brand to it, but your personal brand is your insights, your values, your experiences, your skill sets, how you connect with people. Uh, so this is all what makes up the layers of your personal brand. I like to use the analogy of bricks upon bricks and layer upon layer is your brand. And very often when people come to me, they're like, you know, my brand right now just feels like a pile of bricks. It's all over the place. I do this, I do that. And what I do is I help people create a strategy to first discover their brand, understand how to articulate it. I'm sure you've heard of a word uh, or the elevator pitch, creating an elevator pitch. I actually have my own word for it. I call it an empowerment pitch because it empowers your listeners to connect with you in a more impactful way. When I think of an elevator pitch, I think of somebody looking at their watch and going, do, 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 do. When are we going to get off this elevator? So this right. person stops talking. <laughs> you right. know, an empowerment pitch is concise to the point and speaks to the need that your listeners have. So, uh, so that's, you know, your personal brand really comes from within, but then you need to know how to communicate in a way that your audience connects with. So it sounds like it's more than just coming up with a personal, uh, it, it sounds like it's a lot more than just, pers you know, what you're doing. Uh, like you said, it's getting yeah. to, know, to, to be able to connect and getting to know you as a person or exactly I, I do a presentation on why your brand matters uh that goes into deep about this but one of the things i say is your business or service is what you do but your personal brand is how you show the world what you do so personal brand another way to describe it is what you think about yourself and how other people think about you and in the middle is your personal brand and you help people find that. I help people, I, I like to say discover it because very often I think when people think of finding, they're trying to look for external, you know, or they need to read more books, they need to attend more webinars, they need to do more things to find their greatness. But in reality, the greatness is within. It just needs to be uncovered through the layers. So I have different ways of helping people do this. I am actually getting ready to roll out a an ebook uh, that people can download that has basically explore your personal brand how to become an influencer there's different levels that people go through when it comes to being able to showcase their brand and i i, I call it the three pillars of branding attract connect and engage and the engagement piece is when you're able to be an influencer so i take clients through the steps of being able to not just discover, but how do they spotlight and become an attractor? 
where it's not just about what you do, but it's how you connect with human beings, not just human doings. Mm. What kind of um, clients do you typically work with um, or different, maybe other recurring, you know, industries like, is there, or is it all, all across the board or? So I can work with entrepreneurs. I work with, for example, anybody who needs to sell their business or service online and offline. So basically whoever you would meet at a networking event, you have insurance uh, agents, realtors, accountants, attorneys, entrepreneurs, small business owners. Basically what I do is I help them discover their super strengths and understand how to spotlight in a, in a way that stands out from their competition. So there's a portion of it that's coaching and consulting and then the uncovering. And then the other part is actually, actually the doing, which is social media strategy, video marketing, uh, graphic design, website design. If somebody wants to position himself as a speaker, you know, it's one thing to maybe be an attorney and, you know, go to networking events. But if you position yourself as a speaker or, you know, as a realtor, if you position yourself as a speaker and you have a signature talk that you become known for, you're attracting an audience to you, which is so much more impactful than going to all these different events, if that makes sense. When you can position yourself as an influencer, that's how you know when your personal brand is very clear. When you say signature talk, uh, what do you, do you mean like, like I talk in front of a group of people or what, what exactly is that? Signature talk very often uh, speaks to a personal experience or a need that you had in your life that you feel can relate to your target audience. Um, I'm sure you've heard about how storytelling can really position your business in a more impactful way. I know you, both of you work very, you have, you get referrals all the time. You've been in business for a long time, which to me says that you know how to tell stories and that your clients know how to tell stories, right? So your signature talk really ha is outlined in such a way to connect a need to a solution. And it may not necessarily have to do with your line of work. It may have to do with a need that people can relate to. So for example, do you mind if I share a little bit of my background and my story to tell you about what my signature talk is? And that might Please. better explain it. <laughs> okay, so, so I, I, I had a two part thing. I, I should say I, I had a signature talk. And then when I went through my own personal branding transformation, and was able to get to a deeper level of vulnerability, that's really when my business was able to get to another level. So I'll, I'll tell you my politically correct signature talk version, and then I'll tell you about how I was really able to take the, my brand to another level. So essentially, I had been in corporate America for I don't know, 37, ever since I was 19, I was always working up, earning positions that typically only those with college degrees earn. And I'll tell you a little bit of why I did not take the traditional route of education in a little bit. Uh, but I was always looking for opportunities to prove myself. I had a work ethic and, you know, I was promoted to be a corporate sales trainer with Verizon based on my ability to teach sales and marketing, moved me to New Jersey for the job transfer. And five months later, I was one of nationwide layoffs. I want to say this was about mm -hmm. eight years ago. So here I am in New Jersey, moved from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, didn't know anybody. And I had to start doing this thing called networking to find out what my next opportunity would be. And so I just started going to all these different networking events, getting connected to organizations, doing social activities with meetup.com. And I, I just threw myself in 100%. And one of the things I realized is how scattered networking can be. We just happen to get invited to an event. We happen to see a Facebook post. So I realized that it would be really impactful to have a networking navigator resource to help people know when, where, and how to network locally. And I didn't see that out there. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I need to create it because <laughs> I feel like it would be important. So. I started curating all my connections and I did a launching event uh, back in 2014, I want to say, 2013. And that's where I started with Full Circle Networking LLC. And I started doing events. This one was on a Monday night. 
I had about 200 people come out on a Monday night, 22 different networking organizations represented there. Somebody told me, don't ever do an event on a Monday night because no one will come. But knowing how to communicate value, if you can, again, relate your need and your customer's need to the solution, that's how you're able to communicate value. So anyways, uh, flash forward, I just started being coming ingrained with networking and helping people network locally. Um, I started doing workshops on networking. That's when I was became featured in Forbes on how to network effectively in a digital age. So meanwhile, I'm getting all this traction. And before you know it, I started attracting people who really liked my ideas. And unfortunately, uh, there were some people who started stealing my ideas and getting close. And I went through this time of really feeling like, oh my gosh, my identity is threatened. And somebody's trying to take my baby from me. And, you know, when we go through a, time, a challenging time like that, we feel like uh, we have to give up. But instead of giving up, I leaned in more to what my passion was. And I realized people can take my business and my service could end, right? We get let go from jobs or COVID-19 happens and we can't show homes anymore. <laughs> so people can take your business or service, but they can't take you. They can't take your personal brand. That's why you can continue to grow it. So when I realized for myself the power of personal branding and why I was so passionate about it, I got to the core of why I'm passionate. And it comes from the fact that I used to be an outsider, not just with moving to New Jersey, but mm -hmm. I was an outsider growing up. And I'm, I, I don't wanna take up too much time showing this backstory, but to, this is the signature talk that actually came out with my book, Create Your Potential. Um, and the chapter that I focus on is understanding the power of vulnerability when it comes to personal branding. Because people connect with people before mm -hmm. they connect with your business. So right. when, I, when I was 14, uh, I, I was actually the oldest of 10 kids. And so wow. I lived a very different life <laughs> than nine many Nine brothers people. and sisters? Yeah, Holy yeah. Smokes. And when I was 14 years old, my family joined this religious conservative lifestyle where we were very limited, especially as women. Uh, there was a lot of oppression in that women were being taught that your place is in the home and have kids. You're not encouraged to have a career. I wasn't encouraged to go to college. Um, and essentially, I wasn't given the ability to truly create my potential because there were so many limiting beliefs around it. And I was in this uh, lifestyle that was telling me what I can't do. So when I was 19, I just felt in my gut that I had more to offer. And in order to do that, I realized I need to break away and, and, and create my potential essentially. So at 19 years old, I left home. Uh, I was able to find a living situation and, you know, I ha I was in survivor mode for a long time, but over the course of my twenties and thirties, I realized the power of unlocking my potential really came through understanding, discovering my skill set, and not letting limiting beliefs, uh, be a roadblock to my potential. So cool. I wanted to give you a perspective. That's a very, that's a previous version of like a signature talk, but that's an example of how I, when I realized not everybody can relate to my past, right? Not everybody was necessarily part of a large family, you know, a very different lifestyle. You know, I was homeschooled in my high school years. I didn't go through traditional schooling. Uh, but all that to say is everybody can relate to what it feels like to be lost at one time or another. And when I was able to connect my need to feel a sense of belonging and connection to other people having the same need, my vulnerability allowed people to speak their vulnerability more. And I feel like that has opened up doors for me to tell my story in a bigger way, as well as help people understand that personal branding is a personal transformational experience when you really dive in deep. But it really is what sets you up for ultimate success. Is there a cool. typical amount of time that it takes you to help somebody find their branding? Do you go through a session of questions or do you just sit down with them and talk or like, how do you go about doing that? 
Yeah. Well, the first thing I do is I offer anybody who wants to connect with me a 15 minute complimentary discovery call. And this is really an opportunity to get to know me and to know if, you know, if you have that gut feeling that you have more to offer and you're just trying to put your finger on it. That is great for somebody to just talk to me to kind of uncover a couple of the layers to help them start thinking bigger. But it's really meant to be an introductory call. The next thing that I recommend people do is a discover your personal brand strategy session. So that is where we go through the discover your brand workbook. It's a download and I encourage them to work through it themselves first. Honestly, it should only take a couple hours. You know, it depends how involved and how much you want to think through things, right? One to two hours. Um, once they do that, then we get on a Zoom call and we go through the questions and the goal of the call is to really fine tune their empowerment pitch, which can be tailored, you know, maybe right now people are going through this time of uncertainty and they're like, well, I don't know what I, I might be doing something completely different in a few months. Mm -hmm. This doing this activity will help them have a foundation so they can tailor it to no matter what they're doing, because we're going to be really fine tuning the trigger words that's going to help them connect with their audience that they naturally connect with. One of the things I had to go, go through is when people are feeling like they have a roadblock and their network is not growing, very often it's because they're putting themselves in a circle that maybe they're not comfortable with. And when you're first starting out with networking, you need to start with your comfort zone and, and expand out of that. So I take people through the process of becoming comfortable with networking, both online and offline. So like I said, it starts with discovering your personal brand because that's how you're gonna interact with people. And the next one I do, a uh, session I have available is helping people explore their personal brand. And that comes with the PDF download of the uh, full, you know, uh, the full, not workbook, but the ebook. Uh, mm -hmm. that has all the steps that I went through in attracting, connecting, engaging my target audience. So it goes over like what to look for with social media, networking, website design, um, creating a signature talk, storytelling, all those different aspects. So people can obviously take advantage of that one session and use it to go from there. Or if somebody wants to work with me on an ongoing basis, I also have an opportunity where they can do that and we go through the steps together. And I find that accountability really helps them stay on focus and get through the steps quicker than if they were to do it through on their own. So what are some of the like first things you notice? Say someone, um, they, you have your session and then they do their whole, you know, they do the workbook, they, they, they get the ebook, they work through that. All right, let's go on a, you know, let's, let's start working through things. Like, are there some major offender, you know, like what are some of the biggest offenders, things that people aren't doing, shouldn't be doing? Um, or like, what are some of the first things you work on with, with a lot of people? So one of the things I'll say is I am, so up until this point, I have been doing workshops, one-on-one -on -one consulting, and I, I've been doing, um, speaking engagements, I actually just recently, I haven't even started promoting the ebook and the workbook. So this is the first time you're hearing about it. Uh, but I wanted to share it because through all the one-on-one -on -one consulting events and workshops, I realized I really need to put my strategy out there in a concise way. Uh, so just so you're aware, I'm actually launching this portion of where it's really more of a hand-holding experience versus the group. With COVID-19, what was ironic is for a long time I was focusing on in-person workshops and events and I've had to pivot like the rest of us and I'm now offering these virtual options. So I just wanted to clarify that this is actually a new opportunity that I'm offering people to help them in a way that they can do this virtually with me online and not necessarily have to attend a workshop or go to an event to learn. So to answer your question, one of the things I see people do is at a networking event and when they're interacting in a room, they typically have a fallback knee jerk way of dealing with anxiety or uncomfortability, not knowing how to interact. So one of the things I talk about is being aware of your body language and also envisioning before you go into a networking event, how you want the interactions to look you know, going in 
seeing the outcome that you want. Um, I also have other tips that I give on follow up as well as when you're in a circle of people, how you engage them, how you can make introductions, how to be a connector at a networking event and the process of doing that because at the end of the day, I use the analogy of a networking event because you're in a crowded room full of people and you need to figure out how to stand out. Same way on social media. You're in a crowded space and you need to figure mm -hmm. out how to stand out. So the principles are the same. So that's why I said the pillars attract, connect, and engage. When you're able to engage people in a crowded space, you're able to stand out as a connector and an influencer. So I teach those steps uh, through the training that I provide. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so is the, because I, I, I know you, you just mentioned it's like similar for networking events and social media. So right now it's probably 100% social media because we're not having any networking events for a while. Right. So like, are there, is there, do you have any tips on just general tips on like how does somebody stand up? Or what are most people doing wrong with their social media? I, I'm sure you could get into a lot of different things, but just any takeaways that someone could say, hey, look, here's one thing I'm doing wrong with my social media that I could be yeah. doing better to help stand out. Well, and, and so this is one of the trainings I've been providing lately is on how to create your potential during times of uncertainty. Because like you said, it's not, it's not just about standing out with visual representation. I can help people with design and website. I create graphic designs and banners and posts. But at the end of the day, people also want to see authenticity. So one of the ways that I encourage people to create their potential during times of uncertainty is first, discover your brand, you know, but the next step is, and, and, and I'll also, uh, I, if you go to my website, createyourpotential.com, there's a button on the homepage that says, take this free quiz. And basically what it does, it's a way to find out your networking personality, which is how you naturally connect with people, which is really the first step in understanding your brand. Because like I said, when you understand how you naturally connect, then you can add the other layers of getting out of your comfort zone and you know, exploring other ways. So it's a, it's a fun quiz, it's seven questions. It's not based on a DISC assessment. It's really just meant to help you think bigger and, and think about your brand. But I, use, I like to use the analogy of superheroes because superheroes, in order to be at their strongest, they had to go through a difficult period of understanding how to use their strengths. Think of Spider-Man, Batman, right. and very often they had an underlining fear that they had to overcome. So... I, I use the analogy of superheroes in this quiz. So you would, when you take the quiz, you'll find out what your super strength is. And just to give you an idea, there's a fortifier, illuminator, resilient, connector, you know, these are all ways that people connect. So when we talk about how we can start interacting online, it's important to know, are you a fortifier? Are you somebody who likes to create a foundation for people and set the tone? Are you a illuminator? Do you like to give tips and ideas? So imagine how if you understand where you are at your root, you want to be highlighting that online. If somebody is witty and they have a sense of humor, you know, what kind of com comedic relief can you add online that doesn't offend anybody? That's the other thing that I would encourage people to. You want your personal brand to shine through. Um, so you want to be careful about controversy as well, um, unless it has to do with your brand, because you're going to attack, you're going to attract your target market. Uh, so that's something you want to think about with conversations that you dive into and everything in that nature is you want to highlight your personal brand in a way that people can engage with. Um, so the other thing that I recommend too is for people to create opportunities to connect in a more impactful way. Obviously, we're doing this right now, doing interviews. You know, creating happy hours online is a great opportunity. I had the limiting belief that somehow it wouldn't be as personable online as offline, but there are different icebreakers you can use and ways you can engage people. So um, the other recommendation I have for highlighting your personal brand online is 
really seeking to engage local influencers and not reaching out to them as an, oh, can you help me? But more, what can I do to help you? How can I be a start? Sharing their posts, sharing their quotes. This is a great way to add value to your community. Maybe in the beginning, you don't feel like you have as much to offer. There's nothing wrong with sharing posts that inspire you. Mm -hmm. um, so those are just a couple ideas. I'm trying to think, um, was there any other question you had along those lines that might relate to your mm -hmm. audience? I think that's a good start. I think they're great tips. Where yeah. can we find the quiz and your page? What's yeah, so there's two, th two things I would recommend. If you go to createyourpotential.com, you'll see on the home screen a button that says the quiz. So you click on that and you can go through the steps. It only takes about five minutes to complete. The next thing I would recommend is if you go to createyourpotential.com backslash next steps, you can watch a video where I really dive deep into why personal branding is important. Um, and then there also is the options on that page to have a discovery call or a um, discover your brand strategy session on there as well. Actually, to backtrack, a discovery call, if you go on my services tab, you can select that. But next steps is really if you want to dive into starting to discover your personal brand. Awesome. Um, I was going to say, I feel like I have a million more questions. Uh, we typically make our calls about half an hour. Uh, would you, I'm hoping you'd be willing to come back sometime because sure. you have your book also, Women Who Rise. We didn't even get to touch on that. Um, but what's the best way for, hopefully you'll come back, number one. And number two, what's the best way for people to reach you by going to createyourpotential.com or is there phone numbers or how do you want to be? Yeah. Well, and I just want to uh, reiterate um, the book, Women Who Rise, that signature talk, that story, I go into more detail about it in, in that book. So that kind of gives an overview. Mm -hmm. um, and you can, uh, if you're interested in that book, go to createyourpotential.com backslash my story. But you can see the tabs and navigate the website. Uh, to connect with me personally, my email address is Rebecca at createyourpotential.com. You can also find me on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, just search Rebecca, R-E-B-E-C-C-A, last name C-H-A-L-S-O-N. And I also invite you to check out my podcast, Real Talk with Rebecca, where we have real conversations with influencers who are making a difference in the community. Sounds great. Very nice. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. Yeah, anything else, yeah. Rodney? <laughs> we appreciate you being on the call. And uh, like Seth said, I'm sure we'll, we'll have another one. Sounds great. I'm excited. Great. Thanks awesome. so much. All right. Take All right. care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. You too. Bye. Yeah.